Lee. Thanks, uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, 48 hours after the budget uh, that was uh, delivered here made a, a number of references to start-ups and entrepreneurialism and innovation and small business. Let's go to uh, those that are in the know and see what they say about this budget. We've got Ru Rui Rodriguez, who's managing partner at Tankstream Ventures, says, overall, it's positive that the government has mentioned start-ups twice in the budget, but specific incentives are still lacking or aren't applicable to the sector, so in the end it's difficult to look at the glass half full with this budget. And that's what they're saying uh, in relation to what we've seen delivered. Uh, and it is not the only criticism that is being levelled at this budget that pretends that it has a, a focus on small business and jobs and growth, but the reality is saying otherwise, because we are confronted with a very serious challenge that not only do we have more jobless now than compared to the global financial crisis, we're actually at risk um, of being loaded up with the weight of that joblessness well into the future. And we are under massive pressure to change on two counts. First, that mining in the way that we knew it is not delivering the wealth, but importantly not delivering the jobs that we once uh, experienced. For example, LNG facilities. LNG facilities Liquid, uh, uh, liquefied natural gas that took more, over 35,000 people to build are now being operated by less than 5,000 people. 5,000 people. Our GDP growth has taken a one percentage point hit because the number of construction projects as they've ended have required less people, which means that joblessness is up and we are having less jobs around for those people to go into. And on top of that, the future challenge is that technology is wiping out manual and entry-level jobs and that there are fewer and fewer jobs for people to go into that require little or no training. So we have in our own country this challenge with the economy changing, but also technology putting that impact on, and we need to see whether or not this government is actually thinking ahead. What is its jobs plan? And the problem is there isn't much of a jobs plan in place. Other countries get this. If you look in, for example, the UK that is focused on financial or in fintech or in New Zealand that has co-investment programs and entrepreneurs' visas to be able to generate the type of innovation required there. In Singapore, $14 billion put aside for a national framework for innovation and entrepreneurship. South Korea that has $100 million co-investment programs. They're all changing their economies. And in the US, they have figured in the US they have seen that jobs grow 25 times faster in the tech sector than any other sector in the country, and they are making massive investments and they lead the world in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship, small businesses and start-ups that got a big mention in this budget but had no plan backing up the words, making it up as they're going along. And we have to work now. Again, look at what the start-up sector is saying. They're saying, for example, in today's globally connected digital world, our education and training systems need to place a far, far higher priority on science, technology, engineering and math skills, including information and communication technology skills. That's from the Australian Computer Society's Andrew Johnson, who, is, who, who, when you look at this budget, when it cuts billions out of schools' training, when it cuts, as the member for Cunningham indicated, nearly 20 per cent out of vocational education and training, where are we getting ready for the jobs of the future? We are not. We are not. Where are we getting ready for the fact that each new technology-based job creates five additional jobs in other sectors, according to Enrico Moretti, Professor of Economics at the University of California in Berkeley? And we're not being prepared for it at all. And so we're under pressure to change. We risk being left behind. We have no plan to generate jobs. The only job that was being thought of in this budget there was only one job being thought of, and that's the Prime Minister's job. Because that was the only target for this budget. The only target for this budget was to get both the Prime Minister and the Treasurer through. But the problem is we can't afford that type of short-term thinking. We need to be able to think ahead about what is going to generate the jobs for the people that I represent in my area, that the member for Greenway represents, the member for Wakefield, the member for Jellybrand, the member for Griffith. 
We are all concerned about what is going to happen to jobs in the future, but there is absolutely nothing here in terms of investing in schools and education, and there is very little thinking in advance about what we need to do to keep our country ahead while others are stealing the march on us. Order.